Hi everybody and welcome to the uh, color composition and rendering rotation. Uh, it's hard to believe we're already going through five weeks of the semester uh, and again I apologize for not being here uh, the first week but uh, I think through a series of uh, videos uh, I should be able to cover as I mentioned in class the other day. The first week is really just a lot of uh, boilerplate covering what the course, what the rotation's about, the equipment, the lab, getting things set up, uh, understanding the basics of Photoshop, and we really don't start uh, on the first exercise in earnest until the second week. But uh, what I'm going to do is this first video is basically just an overview of the rotation. I'm going to run through the syllabus that you see in front of you. Uh, I'm not going to read through it all, but I'm at least going to touch on the highlights. I encourage you to uh, go through it yourself, make sure you read everything after uh, you've looked at this video. Uh, next, I will cover the five-week calendar so you can see uh, the lay of the next five weeks when the exercises are due. Uh, it's good and bad things about this rotation. It's different than the other ones, definitely. You'll see that as we go through the, uh, the syllabus and the, the calendar. So that's what this first video is going to cover. The second one will be basically an overview of the Photoshop interface. So whether you're completely new to Photoshop or you've had some experience. I want to make sure everybody starts on the same page in terms of understanding the basics and the structure of the program, where to find different things, and some of the jargon. I try to teach it with as little jargon as possible, but the reality is there are certain terms and tools <coughs> and things you need to know so that as we're communicating during class and you're working on things, you can express your questions clearly and I can understand what uh, uh, what you're trying to ask me. So that'll be the second video. The third video will introduce exercise one, which as I said, there's nothing due this in the first week uh, anyway, but I do want you to be able to get started on some ideas for exercise one so that when I get back on October 3rd and I see you that Monday, you'll have gotten started on this. And uh, so that video will talk about the exercise and go through some additional, <coughs> excuse me, some additional Photoshop techniques that will prepare you and that you can apply directly. Some of that's going to be using the Wacom Cintiq tablets that are in the lab. Um, I will probably talk a little bit about that. I'm recording this on my home computer, so I don't have exactly the same setup, but I do have a tablet here and I can show you the uh, tablet properties and uh, another piece of software that uh, will delete the tablet preferences, which if there are issues with it functioning properly, that usually solves the problem. So that's the three videos I hope to put together here and have you look at before October 3rd, uh, actually before before then, so that you can start working on exercise three. And I'll have asked the RTA to be in class on um, Monday and Wednesday, at least for the first hour, to answer any questions. You can watch these videos anywhere, particularly this one. Uh, the second one and the third one, it might actually be better if you bring some headphones into the lab and watch them during class time in the computer lab in room 144 because that way you could pause it and take a look at Photoshop, uh, look at the things I'm talking about, and uh, particularly with the third one, I'll be showing you some techniques and it'll be good for you to try and run through those, follow along the video, and see if you can do that to make sure you understand how to go through that process. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do in these three videos. Now let's talk about the rotation. So this rotation is really focused on color, as you can see, color composition and rendering. But the other twist is that this is all digital media. Whereas your other two rotations will be pencil on paper, this is going to be all drawing in Photoshop, but using very similar techniques that you would use with traditional analog media like uh, markers, design markers, or Prismacolor pencils, uh, anything like that, or just regular pencils as well. <coughs> so that's kind of the, I'm going to present the, the color theory, uh, kind of color principles, how you can apply those, but we're going to do that in the digital world. Now the nice thing about it is we are using, as I mentioned, these Wacom Cintiq tablets. And what that means is that you're not going to be drawing with a mouse. You will be using a pen. So you're still developing your hand-eye coordination. Uh, the pens are pressure sensitivity sensitive and you can adjust that in terms of what that affects in Photoshop. So for example, you could use it to create a thick line when you press hard and a thin line when you press lightly. You could use it to create a very opaque line when you press hard and a very transparent line when you press lightly. And there's actually a few other adjustments that has to do with the direction and tilt and some other things like that that you'll learn about 
as we go through that. So it's a, those are great tools. We have quite a few of them in the department. Uh, and room 144, all the computers are outfitted with uh, smaller ones. We have some larger ones upstairs that you'll have access to as well. And you'll find those really useful as you go through the next uh, five years of your, your education here. All right, so the, the rotation itself then, as I mentioned, it's color, it's digital. And one of the things that separates it uh, from the other rotations is that we have fewer exercises. And partly that's because we're trying to learn the software along with the principles of drawing. <clears throat> and since, let's see, you've been in the plan section, <coughs> Uh, elevation rotation so uh, that will definitely help you because you'll understand a little bit more about those drawings and would we'll be working with the plan uh, as we go through this so as I scroll down here you can see that basically the rotation is broken down into three kind of subunits the first one is a digital photo montage uh, photorealistic design simulations are really uh, important and pretty much essential these days to any practice or firm who's trying to present their ideas. And as a student, you'll use them a lot as well. Drawing perspectives is still important. Being able to do sketches, whether it's on a tablet or on a piece of paper, is still really valuable. And it really is kind of the basic skill that underlies digital photo montage. If you don't understand perspective, uh, you're going to have a little more of a challenge working on a photo montage. So because you haven't had the perspective rotation, I will spend a little time talking about perspective principles in relationship to photo montage. And I will have a lecture about that as well. I guess that's the fourth lecture I, I probably will record in a video uh, if I haven't done that already. And it's really just about the, the background, the history of photo montage, what it is, some of the principles you need to understand. Totally unrelated to Photoshop, uh, just in terms of the basic principles. <coughs> of how you put an effective uh, design simulation as a photo montage, how you put that together and present that clearly. So we'll start with that. And next, we'll get into plan rendering with color. So you're familiar with plans. We're going to take one. I will give you a plan drawing in black and white. And then this exercise, this section of the rotation, will show you how to create color graphic symbols, just like you learn to develop your own vocabulary of black and white graphic symbols for plants and materials and textures and so forth. We're going to do the same thing in here. And uh, one of the things we'll use with that is this is where the pen really comes into play a lot uh, because you can sketch with it and use it like a marker or a colored pencil. But we also I'll be giving you a whole set of custom brushes that allow you to do some really cool things uh, really quickly, not just really good effects, but really big time savers. So we're going to focus on that and uh, again you'll have the advantage unlike the first group of having already gone through that and really understanding how that works. The third section is perspective rendering with color. So again I'm going to give you a perspective drawing. You don't have to create it but we'll talk about the perspective principles just like in the photo montage. We're going to have to find the horizon line, vanishing points, understand convergence within the perspective uh, in order to be able to create the proper rendering techniques and really when we get to exercise three there's not a lot of new things that I'll be teaching you most of the basic tools and techniques you'll learn in the first uh, those first two exercises however in perspectives because of the convergence of perspective it means you have to apply them a little differently so there will be a few there'll be a, a few new things in terms of technique but not as much in terms of Photoshop tools so hopefully you'll continue to develop your understanding of Photoshop as you apply that to a, a new situation with perspectives. <clears throat> and basically, you know, color is one of those things that's really important but can be really challenging in order to, how do you, adding color to a drawing takes it to a whole nother level in terms of understanding what elements are. Uh, even in plan, <coughs> as an abstract drawing, color starts separating plants and hard surface materials and buildings and those kinds of things. So it really does help see that. And pretty much everything is, uh, well, most things are in, at the end of the design process and even during are presented using color. And so it's important to understand these techniques. At the same time, it's really challenging to understand how to create a good color composition. In black and white drawing, you really have to have good line weight contrast and good value composition in order for it to read. And so you're really just dealing with grayscales. Now we have this whole other dimension of color that makes it much more complex. And that's why we will talk about basic color theory and color principles and even a little bit about the psychology of color so you understand the effect that that has 
on your on your drawings and your presentations. So again, only three exercises, longer duration, not quite as rapid fire as the other rotations, but because, and when we take a look at the calendar in a minute, you'll see that the first exercise, the photo montage, takes much more time than the other two, and the second one takes a you know, a little less time, but more than the third one, because as I mentioned, it's kind of front loaded with all the information and techniques about learning Photoshop. And then once you get to the end, it's really about how do you adapt that to do a perspective and your, your skills and your speed will have been improved over the first four weeks of the rotation. And so that should be a little easier for you to put together. So that's a good thing in the sense that you don't have exercises due every day or every other day. It's maybe a challenge because you will need to make progress from one class to the next even though you don't have a due date because of the complexity of the exercise you you really do need to keep moving along and it's easy if you're not good at time management to kind of let that slip and if you don't do much between classes you you'll end up getting behind and have trouble getting those things done on time even though it looks like you have a lot of time to complete them uh, the rest of this you can read through um, the, the knowledge comprehension uh, rotation objectives and technique skills objectives. This basically describes what we're going to be covering in the course. Uh, I'm not going to read through those here. You can do that yourself. Uh, we will obviously be meeting in the computer lab. Uh, it's kind of run like a studio course. I'll start with usually a lecture or a lecture and demonstration, uh, especially in the first few weeks. I'll do that pretty much every class period. I'll be up front presenting something, and then you'll have time to work on your projects and I'll come around and give you critiques just like you know, just like it worked up in the studio. Um, one of the things that maybe is different about the computer lab, people tend to stay put and sit and don't move around and uh, on one hand it's good because maybe there's not quite as much socialization so you tend to work and get a little more focused. On the other hand, I do want you to be able to walk around at some point and see your classmates work, find out what they're doing, ask them how they did a particular technique that you like. So even though we're in the computer lab, um, I, I encourage you to do that as, as well, to be able to be flexible and to get up and look at each other's work. And I know three hours is a long time to sit, so usually if I'm presenting stuff, I'll take a break about midway through, give you a chance to get up and stretch, and we'll come back and focus on the, uh, the work that we're, that we're doing that day. <clears throat> uh, I will look at the calendar in a second. There are a couple recommended texts. They're not requirements. This Drawing Shortcuts by uh, Jim Leggett. I think you've seen that maybe in the main syllabus. Uh, it's really great principles for using color. I'll talk about another book uh, in class uh, about a book called Color Drawing by Mike Doyle, who's actually one of our alumni. Uh, it's a great reference, too. They're not required, but uh, I, I would encourage you to get them and use them as references. If you're completely new to Photoshop, you might think about looking for at the uh, purchasing the Photoshop CC Visual Quick Start Guide. It's a 2015 release, and we're actually at 2016. CC 2016 just got released in June before the semester started. But it's essentially the same. There are maybe a couple new things, but most of it was kind of under the hood internal, <coughs> internal improvements, not a lot of big changes in the tools. And that will really help you with all the basics if you're, if you're struggling with it at all. One of the things I really want to, you know, the only equipment you need here is a flash drive. I would say four gig minimum. I'd probably buy an eight gigabyte. Because we use digital media, although I've already had a couple students come in and say, I don't have my lettering exercise because my roommate spilled cereal all over it, whatever. So that does happen to paper drawings. Uh, however, in this rotation, everything is digital. You're going to get the base maps digitally. You're going to submit your projects digitally. You'll get your grades back digitally. That's the way it's going to work. So you must have a flash drive and keep backup copies of your work. You're responsible to do that. If you're, something happens to your, to your file and you only have one copy of it and you have to start over, that's something that's going to be your responsibility. And I will continue to remind you and encourage you to do so even at the end of classes to, okay, it's time to stop, make a backup copy. Um, we'll be using the Penn State Pass Drive as part of the primary location to save things. And I'll show you how we can, uh, I'll do that when I, get, <coughs> when I get back, but I'll show you how to bump the storage. You get about 500 megabytes by default, but you can actually up that to 10 gigabytes of storage, which you will need because you will fill up 500 megabytes in the first week or two of the rotation. 
Okay, so you can see uh, down below, valuation. Each exercise, when you see the assignments, will have very specific criteria and breakdown as to how it's going to be evaluated, uh, what points are assigned for which, uh, which parts of the project. And you can see the overall grades. Basically, each project is 100%, just to keep it simple, and uh, they're each worth a third of the rotation. So that's how it's going to be weighted. Okay, so that's an overview. Like I said, please read through the specifics here and make sure you're familiar with it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the five-week calendar. <clears throat> so here's the first week. I'm not going to be away, but this is where I'd like you to look through this. Normally, we would I would assign the first exercise on Wednesday, and then you have some time to start working on your design concept, uh, and you'll understand what that means when I go over the, pro the exercise with you. Since I'm not going to be here, I would like you to look at this video. Um, you know, you could look at this on Monday, the second vi video for the exercise you could look at between Monday and Wednesday or on Wednesday in class, that's fine. And then you'll be caught up to speed with where we should be. Uh, and uh, then when I come back, as I said, I'll take a look at what where you're at and we'll pick up from there. Hopefully, I mentioned this in class, I think we won't have to pick up extra Fridays. But if for some, if, if, you, if you feel like you didn't get enough out of videos or everybody's a little behind, then we may end up meeting the Friday uh, in the next week into October there. But that's not my plan. I hope the, hopefully, the, hopefully the videos will be enough for you to just uh, get up to speed with the basics of Photoshop and start thinking about some design ideas. And if you get that far for this first week, then we're right where, you know, the first week of last rotation wasn't that easy either because we missed time uh, because of the school um, introduction, uh, that first day of class was a nightmare of technology. I couldn't get to any files. The students couldn't sign pens out because they weren't ready. Actually, that's one thing I'll mention now. Probably by now you've done it, but if you didn't fill out the paperwork to use the library, that's something that's new this year. It's never been required before, but you I don't know what it is, but you have to fill out some other paperwork to be able to use the library. You want to do that this next week because when I come back, I'm going to ask you to pick up pens in the school library at the end of the hall on the first floor. Uh, you can sign out the Cintiq pens, and uh, if you don't have your library stuff taken care of, they can't sign one out to you. So that happened the first day. No one had their paperwork filled out, so basically by the time everyone got a pen, it was the end of class and we had to go. So you're really not starting much farther behind than, uh, than the first rotation anyway. And since you have these videos, hopefully we'll be able to just hit the ground running. So the first assignment uh, begins then, and you can see it's due on Tuesday, October 11th. So we really have one, two and a half weeks for that first assignment. We have one and a half for the second, and then we have one for the third. So you can kind of see how the time scale collapses a little bit as we go because you're learning more and just reapplying the same principles that you've learned and uh, adding a few new tools here and there. So over the course of the five weeks, even if you're a relatively experienced Photoshop user, I'll guarantee you you're going to learn some new tricks and tips and techniques that you haven't done before. Um, a lot of new features in some of the newest versions of Photoshop CC. They keep adding things and changing things. So if you're, if you're used to using one of the earlier versions, there's a lot of new things to learn just because of that. Uh, you also notice that because everything's digital, um, that's the only way we're submitting it. Most things are due in between class times. So you can see the first exercise is due uh, right here on October 11th at 11 p.m. So you've got a little extra time outside of class to work on that. And that also means it's due the night before. So you get a good night's sleep before you start class on Wednesday. If you want to turn things in before that due date, that's fine. You'll be able to submit that via Canvas. And I'll talk about that process once I get back. It's not really critical right now. Uh, so this gives you an idea. You can see the basic due dates are here and uh, uh, put those in your calendar and work that into your schedule so you kind of know when uh, when the crunch times are going to be. And again, it's nicer because it's a little more spread out, not quite as rapid fire, but there's no less need to make progress from one day to the next. So uh, hopefully after being in a rotation where you really had to crank out those exercises, you're, you kind of got that work, work ethic down and you'll be ready to go. So that's basically an overview of what we're going to be doing. Um, hopefully it'll be fun and enjoyable. I really enjoy teaching this rotation. I've been using Photoshop since version one came out a long, long time ago. Uh, so it's one of my favorite things to teach. And I'm always trying, always learning new things every year and always trying to add some new techniques and new methods in there as well. Okay, so that'll 
I'll wrap up this video and the uh, next one I will do will basically will just be a, an overview of the Photoshop interface just to make sure we've got the lay of the land, the terminology, understand what the pieces are and where we access important tools and, uh, and techniques.